Hey, hey, BTB fans. Uh, Robbie here with one of our artists, Ben. Hello. And uh, today we have an awesome Tau army. We're gonna look at a couple pieces here. To start us off in the middle is an Arvarna battle suit. And uh, this thing's awesome. It's a Forge World piece. Um, tons of detail in it and tons of just cool little stuff. So uh, this is one of the, um, probably one of the first hex pattern projects I've done, which was really awesome, um, as you can see. Um, there's also a, it's a dark gray and then also a, uh, it's, it's more of a blue um, OSL lighting for all the energy weapons and then for the sun filters we have um, in the lenses we have like a green OSL and it just makes a very nice color, um, a lot of good contrast and uh, complementary colors in this but uh, I like the um, I, it's supposed to be a far sight um, theme throughout it but I like the uh, dark red more because it brings out the uh, the OSL a little more it makes that more of the focal point yeah all the colors are so vibrant uh, with this particular scheme because there's lots of dark shadows and uh... And there's a really high contrast, and so those greens and blues really pop and really stand out. Um, and all together, the army looks really good together. All right, this is a top view, um, so you can really see that hex pattern on these guys. And uh, it's awesome. It looks really good. Yeah, I believe, Ben, you used an airbrush yeah, on so, these. So uh, what we did is uh, it was actually kind of experimental trying to get this to work right. Um, but the most material that we actually found out working for us was a mesh material just that we got from a fabric store and because uh, to be able to get into like the detail areas or the dark areas um, there's a lot of like especially on the hammerhead here in these um, dark areas we left them mostly dark for a reason but um, to get into those curves uh, it's really useful to have something flexible so the material really worked well for that and then uh, we also, uh, it was fun with the highlighting on that. We had to uh, dual wield airbrushes just to get the highlighting and the um, base coat on there without moving the stencil as well. It was pretty fun trying to do that. Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. Today uh, I'm going to be working on some hexagon pattern tau, uh, the easy home way if you don't have a hairbrush. Um, what we have right here is some different. Uh, stencils that you can use depending on the size of the project maybe if you're doing some terrain or something that needs a little bit larger hexagon patterns uh, for the vehicles and riptides and uh, battle suits we use this uh, mesh we got at a fabric store um, I think it's used for making like uh, laundry bags or something it's about the same mesh style as that you can see it <clears throat> what you're gonna do first is take the drones out because they need a smaller mesh pattern for their tops so we'll set those aside. You're gonna need to base coat it black. You're gonna need two separate cans of dark red and your bright red and some sticky tack and a pair of scissors. First thing you're gonna do is take a piece of the mesh and lay it over the tank and cut out a size that's a little bit larger than the tank so that it can contour to all the edges. All right, what I'm doing now is cutting out the mesh around the outside of the tank. I wanna give myself some playroom around the outside because it needs to contour to all the shape of the top of the tank. So give yourself maybe two to three inches around each side. You're not going to use the whole mesh pattern because after you use this piece of mesh maybe three times, it's going to be so caked with paint and so hard, it's going to be almost impossible to work with. So we like to save as much as we can so we don't have to go to the fabric store all the time. <clears throat> then what you're going to do is you're going to lay it over the top. As you can see on this Devilfish, it has this antenna array on the top that is going to impede us being able to lay the hexagon pattern on it. So we're going to go ahead and cut right there so this can lay over the top of it. And just go ahead and feed those antennas in through the hole you made. There you go. Now what we're going to do is cut out any extra pieces we need, like, let's see, this wants to bend this way, so... We'll cut along the front of the engine so that can lay along the side. Uh, 
And then we're going to take our sticky tack, tear off a couple pieces of it. And the key to using the sticky tack is to place it in places that are going to be painted over with uh, paneling, like the light grays or things like that. So our first one right here on these panels, you can go ahead and stick that right there and it'll hold the mesh down through it. You can do the same thing on the fronts of the engines because those are usually metal or black. Pull this around and fold it underneath like this. Looks like we got to do another cut. Fold these ones up under the side. You want to make sure that the mesh is as close to the body of it as possible. The further away the mesh is, the more distorted the hexagon pattern will be. So as you can see, I've made cuts here and here, so this can lay around underneath the body. And we'll take sticky tack and secure that underneath. secure it to the backs of the engines as well. Probably going to cut right here and right here for the back of the tank because I'd like to get a good hexagon pattern on the back as well. So fold those under and same thing just sticky tack it underneath because usually you're not going to hexagon pattern the underneath. You want to be pretty generous with the sticky tack because if you don't use enough while you're spraying it, it might come undone and you'll lose some of the hexagon pattern and have to start completely over with the entire process of base coating it, especially if you're not using an airbrush like the way I'm going to show you right now. Just securing these things right here. You don't need to worry about the backs of the engines because they're going to be painted a different color as well. So... under I'm gonna need to cut along the front right here as well you kind of just want to play with it and cut where you need to cut to make sure that the patterns lay where you want them to lay so I made a cut long ways and then here so this can fold over the fronts even though there's <clears throat> patterns there where you're possibly not going to need it As you can see, I just cut it to where all the mesh will lay around. So I'll probably try and stick all those down with one piece at a time. All right, just about done with the sticky tack. This is the longest part, is cutting all the mesh and making it lay the right way. You wanna give the sticky tack a good push. If you don't push hard enough, it won't uh, adhere to the model um, and you know, the sticky tack just peels right off, no big deal. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start base coating this thing. You wanna take your dark red, shake it up nice and good. And don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty when you do this either, because some of the contouring of the devil fish, especially here and here, uh, have dips in, and the only way you're gonna get it is really by holding it. So it's okay to get your hands a little dirty when you're painting. I could actually use some sticky tack on these pieces to help me out, these little, uh, these little dots here and here, these will not have hexagon patterns at the end. They'll be painted probably gold. So you can go ahead and stick a piece to there. And stick another piece on the other side. Right, that should give me a pretty good contour, I think. All right, we're going to go ahead and start spraying them. key to this is you're not trying to base coat it like you're covering up the whole model like when you do it in black you're really just trying to give it a dusting so that it shows that hexagon pattern 
right? And you go ahead and take your medium red. And this one is very, very subtle. You're really just trying to highlight the hexagons because it takes a really, really long time to go in and highlight each individual hexagon. And it's okay if your hexagon pattern fades in and out a little bit. It looks more natural, almost like the hexagon is a shielding on the actual devil fish. Do it on the back side. And that's going to be it. You just peel off all the mesh pattern. And if you do these in smaller chunks, um, like just do a piece at a time, like one engine and one front piece, like one half of the front, one half of the sides, uh, and you use an airbrush, it's obviously going to turn out quite a bit better because of the precision you can achieve with the airbrush. But the time it takes to do it is not always paramount. So go ahead and unsecure all this sticky tech from the bottom. And this sticky tech you see left over will roll right off. It's not a big deal. It's not going to damage your model at all. And as you can see, there's a good hexagon pattern here. There's fairly good hexagoning on the front, on the engines, as well as some on the back. Uh, this is the quick and easy way to do it. Again, if you use the airbrush and you use smaller sections of mesh and just do maybe this piece, and then the center, and then the top, you're going to get better results. But this is a quick, easy way to get a nice looking hex pattern. You could probably hexagon all your tanks in maybe an hour and a half. And that's going to be about it. I hope you guys like the video and uh, subscribe for more.